pick up my guide. Got a tracking job for you. We're out here riding in the open. Why did we come this way? A little bit of torture first. I'll find them. You kill them, you owe me nothing. Hey. How you doing, Gatlin? Yes, sir. Well, man, what a fitting name for a Western, huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks to my dad. Appreciate it. Uh, Jeff in Las Vegas, man. Good to talk to you this morning about Catch the Bullet. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure, man. So I have to ask you right off the bat, what hat do you wear in this movie? A black hat or a white hat? It's a black hat. It's, oh, uh, it we, we fit the stereotype, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, playing a villain in a Western, I mean, for an actor, that's got to be a dream come true. I mean, who wants to be the good guy, right? It's it's so much more fun when you can cause pain and havoc, you know? And boy, does Jed Blake do that. I mean, he is just, you know, did prison time and now he's out for, for revenge. I mean, what, it's really cool that he has a backstory, you know, that we can yeah. kind of like uh, go on this journey with him. So when developing Jed Blake, what what did you do to prepare to be the villain in this film? Uh, I kind of just looked at him and why is he the villain, you know, and I found that um, unsettled pasts and trauma tend to lead to people not being okay in the present, you know, so he has a lot of stuff that a therapist that would help with, but, you know, just didn't have the tools or the, uh, the ways of getting about that help that he needed. So he takes it out on other people. And dude, he shoots children. He needs a lot of therapy. <laughs> I mean, he he, can't he, get... we're, all, we're all flawed. Okay. Oh, I'm like, wow. I mean, this guy's a cold-blooded killer. So <laughs> that was kind of shocking. Uh, uh, tell me about working with Tom Skerritt. I mean, even if you work one scene with the man, he is just a legend. And he brings such a class to this film. He absolutely does. Again, like you said, we didn't get to spend a whole lot of time together. But the time that we did, um, you could just feel his comfort. You know, he's been doing this for forever. And, and he's such a nice person that uh, uh, it was a lot of fun to get to share the little bit of screen time we did have together together. Well, so this, is a, this is a Western Gatlin. Did you go to cowboy boot camp, learning how to ride a horse, handle a gun? I actually have grown up um, around horses. Uh, so I've been riding since you know, I could walk. So this was the first time a project where I got to uh, have acting and, and horse riding meet uh, and get to do the two of them at once. Well, the name like Gatlin, you've been around horses your whole life. I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, it feels like you already know me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the rest of the cast? I mean, you're an old farmhand, right? Riding your horse. But what about everyone else? Did they have to go to boot camp? Or You know, that was a cool part about this film was um, the casting was done with that as one of the centers of it, of making sure that we all had equine experience. So I think, uh, you know, that adds to the action. You know, we can stay wide. We can have longer shots. We can see the actors performing the action. You know, it's funny because, you know, I'm a big Western fanatic my whole life and people don't realize how difficult it is to make a Western going on location, bringing the horses, wrangling. I mean, it's a big chore. So tell me about shooting on location for this film. Was it difficult? It was one of the more difficult sh shoots I've ever done just because of how physically demanding it is. Like you said, horses are not a motorcycle. You know, you don't just ride up on them and say, here's this, let's go do this shot. You know, these are also actors our cast is twice as big as, you know, a normal movie. So uh, just, you know, dealing with that and, you know, the long days on location, uh, it was a lot to manage. Um, but I think, uh, I, th I think we came out pretty good. And, uh, you know, the star of the film, Jay Pickett, you know, a little bittersweet here, you know, about his passing, you know, but I think that he's got a great legacy with his final performance. I, I, I really hope so. And yeah, um, thoughts and prayers and love for Jay Pickett and his family. Um, I always say to people like he was such a calming presence, no matter how fast we were going, which we were going super fast on this film. Jay was kind of the anchor that kept everything in perspective. Um, a lot of love for Jay. And finally, tell me about working with the director, Michael, how do you say, Pfeiffer? Pfeiffer. Yeah, tell me about him uh, and his style and how was he on the set? What kind of director was he? Is he an actor's director? Uh, Pfeiffer is a really great guy um, and he had his hands full with this one you know we were traveling to new places almost daily to find new locations because again we're traveling this entire film so every day it was like where is this sequence taking place and where is this sequence taking place and it was very guerrilla and it was very by the edge of your seat what can we get done today so um, big props to Pfeiffer for being able to handle that and bring out a product like Catch the Bullet.
Well, Gatlin, congratulations. And uh, you got a stain on your legacy playing this Jed. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> dragging this kid across the prairie, you wouldn't even give him a horse. I was cursing you through the whole movie, man. I really well, I appreciate that, Jeffrey. That's what we're going for. <laughs> Go out with the film and come visit us in Vegas when you have a chance. We'd love to have you. Oh, you got it, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>